Welcome back to Adventures with Rosie and mm -hmm. welcome to Westport on the yeah. west coast of the South Island. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of really neat mining history here so we mm. thought we'd come by, we would have a look at Coal Town, the museum, mm. um, there's also the Deniston mine um, up here, the yeah, incline. The famous yeah. Deniston incline. We also missed one last time and mm. we've been doing a bit of googling the Milliton mine which was down the road from Deniston. Seems like it's not sort of as well documented today. Eh? No, um, yeah. But we've seen some cool photos of some coal wagons uh, going through a tunnel so we're going to go and find that hopefully so yeah come along and um, we've got two days here in Westport to basically just explore the mines yeah. so yeah, let's check it out so home for the next couple of nights while we explore the Deniston and Milliton uh, mines in the area is the NZ MCA park here in Westport cheap and cheerful five bucks per hour per night kids are free as always it is just a big gravel car park um, so it's not the most scenic but it is right down by the water this access to the air is good. There are bins. There's no dump station or water here. You have to go back into town for that, but it's five minutes up the road. So yeah, I think we'll stay here a couple of nights. You can literally see up on the hills here, Deniston. You can see it from the campground, which is pretty cool. There are biking trails as well in behind these trees here. Um, we walked them last time we we're here. So I might have a hoon on the bike after dinner. But yeah, it's good for a few nights. Um, and we've been here in rainy weather and sunny weather, and it's it's fine. It's um it's a big easy to get into perfect you know cheap way to, to check out the area if you're not an NZ MCA member there is actually freedom camping right outside the gate here which is pretty cool there's camper vans there tonight vans so there's plenty of room there so yeah it's kind of um if you're a member or not it doesn't really matter here in Westport you can you can freedom camp Westport's really pro freedom camping which is good to see so yeah we'll um get some dinner going Got some burgers on the barbecue, probably the tenth time we've used the Weber this trip, and then tomorrow we're gonna hit the mines. So this is Coal Town, it's the museum behind the eyesight here, right in the main street of Westport, and it's really worthwhile coming here before you head up like Deniston and Klein or into the Milliton Mines, the bathhouse, that sort of thing because it's packed full of information and history and relics from those mines so you come here do a bit of reading you get a feel for kind of um, how it would have been up there um, they've got things like this here which is the only remaining brake drum from Deniston that's what controlled the cable that sent the coal carts up and down the hill which we'll show you when we go up there but yeah it's really neat you got sort of replicas of coal carts and heaps of information there's a mine down the back of mocked up a mine you can go into so yeah it does cost ten dollars an adult to get in here uh, and two dollars for child, for children rather, uh, under fives are free, seniors are eight dollars I think, but it's well worth sort of coming and just kind of soaking in some of the history before you head up there and check it out. Welcome to Deniston. This is the top of the incline, the coal mine on top of the world. Um, you can see over there uh, where my nephew Will is in those coal uh, wagons, but that was the hill that they sent the coal wagons down at a crazy angle <laughs> all the way down to a station down the bottom where they then uh, trained the coal to the port here. But pretty amazing. A lot of this has been preserved um, by the Department of Conservation. Some of these wagons have been rebuilt and stuff, but there would have been a huge building here for unloading the coal off the um, smaller wagons from the rope road down into the bigger wagons there and you can actually go and stand at the end of the incline as well and look down and see just the sort of crazy angle those carts would have gone down but such an awesome spot up here we've been up here before but it never gets old um, it's it's such a neat spot 
So yeah, let's go check out the Deniston Incline. It's really amazing how much like metal and scrap is left up here. A lot of the other ones we've been to recently have just been picked clean. Um, except for the one in Charleston actually, there was a lot left there as well. But places like Nelson Creek, there's obviously no uh, like equipment or metal or anything left behind. But up here, it is everywhere. I imagine it's buried as well and probably all down the banks when they threw stuff away. But pretty cool. Big scrapyard. So this is the rope road here where the um, small mine carriages would come from the um, mine face and then they would get dumped into bigger carriages up here you used to be able to have a ride on a little train here that took you into the actual mine there was a company that did like mine tours and yeah they rode you know rode you down the old rope road they've kind of put the tracks in there and took you into the mine then some laws changed here in New Zealand about tourism operations in underground mines and the whole thing was shut down I think in 2012 um, so because of those rule changes they just couldn't operate anymore really sad because it would have been such a neat thing to do like to cruise along these old tracks here down the rope road and then yeah into the into the old coal mine but yeah one of those things bit of a shame So that big brake drum we saw in the museum uh, would have sat here. Um, so they took it down the hill and actually restored it. So would have sat here and controlled the speed of those cables and the speed of the wagons going down the hill. Huge. All right, so we came about uh, 10, 15 minutes up the road um, to a place called Militant, so just south of Hector. Um, now we missed this when we first did our South Island adventure. We drove past Militant, didn't think much of it. There was a small mine here. Um, it's not as well documented or preserved as the Deniston miners. But if you drive up a gravel road, uh, well up a quite a good paved road and then a little bit of gravel road, you come across this, the Militant bathhouse. So apparently there's an incline here with some um, coal wagons that are still on the tracks. They went down the hill, similar to the Deniston Incline, just a smaller scale. This was a smaller mine, but this is a massive bathhouse. All of these are individual shower cubicles behind me. <laughs> they've got a drain in them. They've got little shelves in the corner for putting your soap on. Um, look at this, they've got hooks. There's a big boiler down one end and a pump down the other. But yeah, this wasn't signposted. And there's a little sign that says Middleton or Historic Mining Area, but doesn't sort of there's no placards giving you any information, so I don't know too much about it, sorry, but how cool is this? All right, well, it's pretty hard to see on camera, but this is the tunnel where the militant incline came out. So there were two tracks, and then there's still original coal carts on these tracks, full of coal, actually. And you can see them here. They just disappear down the hill, all in line, still on their cables, still attached. Pretty cool find. So, so far we've seen several dozen of these mine carts. There's a cool waterfall running under here, another bridge. And then they just disappear into another tunnel down through there. It's crazy, like none of this walk is signposted or you'd hardly know it was here. There was a sign that said, um, uh, something militant dam walk. And so you walk past a little dam, it didn't say anything about the militant mine carts <laughs> sitting on their tracks going into tunnels.
Well, we've had perfect weather for the last couple of weeks. It's been really great, but the rain's setting in now. So we're going to say goodbye to Westport. We're just hitching up now. Um, we were going to stick around, maybe have a beach day today. Maybe do a bit more exploring, but um, yeah, there's rain in the forecast. There's no, no real point sticking around. So we're going to head further inland now. We're going to stop in town, get a coffee, maybe do some laundry. And head towards Nelson Lakes, um, so back towards Blenheim. One of the first stops we actually had when we came to the South Island was Nelson Lakes. There's a dock campground there, there's a, a jetty that's quite famous, you'll see it in a lot of photos. Um, usually with snow capped mountains behind it, but you can swim off the jetty, there's eels and things there, a few walks to do. So, yeah, we figured it'd be a good sort of stop on the way back to Blenheim. So, yeah, we'll head there now, we'll go through the famous Buller Gorge, which is an awesome drive. I might get the drone out if this rain stops and yeah, catch up with you soon. I think we'll stop in Murchison as well on the way. It's about halfway, so good lunch spot. All right, so we've made it to the lake. This is Lake Rotaiti. Uh, St. Arnold is another sort of name for the area, but it's part of the Nelson Lakes. And around the lakeside, there are dock campgrounds. So this is the um, West Bay campground. Uh, there's also the boat ramp campground and then Kerr Bay, which is right by the famous jetty. So we'll cruise over there tomorrow. That was unfortunately booked out. There's only 10 or so sites there. So um, yeah, they book out really quick. But yeah, that's our campsite here amongst the trees and this place is notorious for one thing and that is sand flies. The sand flies here are so bad that uh, you would have seen them just crawling over the lens of the camera then as I was talking. But uh, this is a dock campground, uh, Department of Conservation. Uh, it is $10 a night for adults to stay here and $5 for a child. From memory the Kerr Bay campground, that's the primo one, is $20 a night per adult. I think when we first stayed there we were like wow this is expensive for a dock campground. But it's, it's really, really scenic. We'll show you the lake in a little bit. But there are some facilities here. There are toilets that seem very clean. There are cold showers, only cold water. Um, little kitchen, some bins there. There's some recycling in St. Arnold except for glass. But yeah, there's a whole lot of little campsites within this sort of area. Um, some you can get large vehicles and do some of a smaller camp, uh, camper vans and some of a tent. But yeah, we've just booked online as we drove up. Um, Nice and, nice and easy, but yeah, these hand flies are literally bouncing off. You can probably see them bouncing off my face, and I'm doused head to toe in, uh, in bug repellent. So we're going to get the kids covered in bug repellent, and then I think we'll stroll through that gate and um, see if we can see the lake. And there's also a river that runs up next to this campground, which I can hear further up here. So apparently there's a walk up there too. So yeah, we'll check it out. Well, good morning. We had uh, rain all night last night, um, but it stopped this morning, which is awesome. So we drove around the lake. We were just staying over this little um, bit that sticks out of the lake there at West Bay, and this is the main jetty here in the sort of main area of um, Lake Rotaiti. Um, so yeah, this is the jetty you can jump off, swim off. In the winter, these mountains are covered in snow, and so you'll see some cool pictures of people sitting on that jetty or jumping off that jetty when there's snow in the background. Um, there's another jetty a bit further down at the boat ramp that has a lot of eels in it, so we'll go and check them out. There's a couple of little walks you can do. There's a bellbird walk you can do here, which is, um, I think it's like 600 meters or something, and then there's an hour-ish walk you can do through here, and then you start getting into all the backcountry walks up in these hills. You can walk over this one and over these ones and all over the place. There's a water taxi that takes people out. We uh, met some people who follow us on the channel here yesterday, um, camping in the same campground, and they just did the lake circuit, and I think she said it was eight hours of walking to do the lake circuit. It's a bit deceptive because it's quite long, it goes down through the valley there, so you can do an eight hour walk around the whole place if you want. We're just going to do a little short walk, we'll check out the eels, maybe go for a swim. It seems like, you know, when in Rome tradition, you've got to jump off the jetty whenever you're here, so. Maybe we'll see. Hopefully it warms up. So the trees in here are quite interesting. These are mountain beech and red beech trees. Really cool sort of alpine forest. But there is a small insect that actually um, feeds on the sap. So these, uh, it's called the honeydew cycle. But basically these trees um, produce a sap and a small insect eats that sap and then excretes a, um, 
kind of a sweet I don't know what it is but the insects love it but it also creates this black mold and you see it all over the trees so a lot of the trees in here are jet black and look like they're dying but it's just this black mold on the outside and um, as a result because of that sweetness that nectar there is a lot of um, wasps in here so there's a huge wasp problem so all around these trees is these yellow bait stations nailed to them to try and keep the wasps under control but you can kind of just hear this hum of like thousands of wasps as you're walking through here so I think it's still a big problem but it's a funny forest to walk through because half the stuff looks like it's been burnt in the past but yeah quite interesting That was a refreshing wee swim and actually not as cold as I thought it was um, but yeah it's quite a nice little spot here there's plenty of room to sort of park your caravan if you just want to come down for the day the Kerbe campsite is the one I think I talked about last night over there that only has 10 campsites you can book that one online but if that's full you can just go around to the western um, bay campgrounds where we were there's also one across the road called Teetotal which people seem to rave about and that has a lot of mountain bike trails just across the road as well so if you're into your biking that might be better it is not right on the lake that one it is on the other side of the road but yeah pretty nice spot there's a boat ramp here if you've got a boat so we're just feeding the kids and then we're going to head an hour and a half that way down the river towards Blenheim by that way I mean east and it follows the river back towards Blenheim through all the vineyards and everything and um, yeah we'll find a spot in Blenheim for the night